Welcome to Writing Formulas for Ionic Compounds. In this lesson, we're going to find out how to write a formula for an ionic compound given the name. Before we get too far into that, we're going to want to look at this key idea. The key idea for this lesson is that the sum of all charges of the ions in an ionic compound must equal zero. So the ions that make up an ionic compound, when we add up all of their charges, it has to come out neutral. They have to equal zero. This idea is going to be our basis for how we write formulas. Here we have the names of two ionic compounds given to us. First we want to look at what information the names do give us. So the names tell us the identity of the elements present. So lithium fluoride tells us that we have lithium and fluorine. Calcium fluoride tells us we have calcium and fluorine. Now we also know some other things here. Lithium is a group 1A metal, so the ion is going to have a positive 1 charge. Fluorine is a 7A nonmetal, so it's going to have a negative 1 charge based on that group. Also over here. Calcium is a group 2A, group 2A metal, so it's going to have a plus 2 charge. So that's all information we can figure out without having to do any real analyzing of the situation. So what information then isn't given by the name? Well, the name doesn't tell us anything about the number of atoms of each element. That we have to come up with on our own. And we're going to use this key idea of the sum of all charges being zero to figure out what the formula is. So let's see what we can come up with for lithium fluoride. Well, if I put these two together, I'm going to get Li F. And putting these two together, the plus 1 balances out the minus 1, so I know that this formula is correct because the overall charge of this molecule is 0. Plus 1 minus 1 equals 0. However, if I do that over here, if I just write CaF, okay, the calcium's a plus 2, the F's a minus 1, this equals plus 1, not 0. So this doesn't work. How am I going to get fluorine to completely cancel out the plus 2 charge of the calcium? Well, I can do that if I have two fluorines present. If I have two negative 1 charges, it will balance out the positive charge of the calcium. So I can do calcium with two fluorines. And this is the appropriate formula. Again, because it equals 0 if I add up all the charges for all the ions present. Now what happens if I have a transition metal such as iron 2 phosphide? Well, just like before, I'm going to break this down into its parts. I'm going to first consider the iron 2 ion, so that's an Fe2+, and then I'm going to consider the phosphide ion, which is phosphorus, and I know that that's going to have a minus 3 charge based on its group being 5A. So in this case, dealing with a transition metal is very easy because the name of the transition metal ion tells you what the charge should be. The only situation we do have to deal with here is the fact that we have to balance the 2 plus charge from the iron and the 3 minus charge from the phosphide. We somehow have to get these overall equal to zero. Now there's a method we can use for finding out what the formula is given the ions. If we know the charges of the ions, we can find the formula by using a method called crossover. And crossover works like this. I have iron and I have phosphorus. I'm going to take the number from here, the 3 minus in the phosphide ion, I'm going to take the 3 and I'm going to cross it over to the iron and that becomes a subscript 3, meaning I have 3 iron ions. I'm also going to take the number from the charge of the iron ion, the 2 plus, and I'm going to cross it over to the phosphorus and write it down as a subscript here, telling me I have in this formula, I have two phosphide ions and three iron ions. And if the crossover method worked correctly, this should have a total charge of zero. So let's see if this is correct. So my irons are 2 plus, so three 2 pluses is going to be plus 6. And if I have two phosphides, and each one is minus 3, that's going to be 2 times minus 3, which is minus 6. And 6 minus 6 does equal 0. So this crossover method gave me the correct formula for iron 2 phosphide. 
and this crossover method works well in almost all cases. But there is one situation where you need to be careful of using it. Let's say I had calcium oxide as the name given to me, and I want to write the formula for calcium oxide. If I break this down, this is a calcium 2 plus ion, and oxygen is a 2 minus ion. If I do the crossover method with these two ions, I'm going to get something incorrect. I'm going to get Ca with the 2 from the oxygen and the O with the 2 from the calcium. I'm going to get Ca2O2. But this is incorrect because calcium 2 plus and oxygen 2 minus balance each other out already and the real formula is CaO, not Ca2O2. To avoid this kind of thing causing a problem for you, you should always try to reduce the subscripts as if you were reducing a fraction. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, in math, we wouldn't leave a fraction as 2 over 2. We'd want to reduce that to 1 over 1. And this formula is the same way. The calcium 2, oxygen 2, we can divide both of these by 2, and they will cancel out. That will give me CaO, the correct formula. So when you use this crossover method, make sure that at the end, you reduce whenever possible. The last case we're going to look at is writing a formula when a polyatomic ion is present. And again, we're going to use a crossover method here to demonstrate. But note that we just looked at iron 2 phosphide. The difference being the IDE ending here tells you it's a regular old phosphorus ion. Whereas if you see this phosphate, this ATE ending not being IDE should be a giveaway that this is a polyatomic ion. So you have to be able to recognize this as a polyatomic ion because it doesn't have the standard IDE ending. So how are we going to write the formula for iron 2 phosphate? Well, iron 2, again, is Fe2+, and phosphate is a polyatomic ion that we can look up. And phosphate is PO4, 3 minus. So when I go to use my crossover method, I'm going to have iron, and iron is going to get the 3 from the phosphate ion crossed over to it as a subscript, so Fe subscript 3, and the PO4 polyatomic group is going to get this 2 from the iron ion crossed over to it as a subscript. I can't write PO4 2 like that because it will look like PO42. So I have to put in parentheses around the polyatomic group to show that the 2 applies to the entire group and that there are two phosphate ions present for every three irons in the compound. That wraps up our lesson on how to write formulas for ionic compounds. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.